cactus. And on my take tonight, a clash of tongues as agricultural authorities ponder the content of fertilizer bags. The news gang is here. And I hereby instruct the Department of County Public Service Management and the county treasury to immediately stop salary processing and payment to the affected doctors. Number two, thereafter we shall move to the summary dismissal of the all doctors who continue to be on strike. And of course, that strike continues into what is now becoming a month-long strike. I think it'll be 30 days of uh, the doctors being on strike tomorrow. And still no end in sight to this stalemate. Everybody is holding fast to their positions. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to News Gang tonight. I mean... What an interesting 30 days. And, and look, I, I don't want to compare it to the last one because the last one was three months, 100 days. So we're a third way there. And yet here we are. Maybe, Jamila, you can bring us up to date with what's happened at least over the last week, some of the key mm -hmm. uh, moments, because it's... It's getting worse rather than getting better. It's getting worse yeah. because um, I remember the, the doctors have been striking um, almost every other day um, since last week. Um, of course, they were joined by the clinical officers and then there were the lab technicians. And then now the government is playing hardball from today. Remember last week there was a meeting that they had attended and um, the government left the meeting uh, when they had asked the doctors to go back to work and then they can have discussions and then left the meeting because the doctors refused to listen to them. And since then, every time they've been speaking about it, be it the government or the doctors, everybody has been sticking to their stand, which is we want what we've asked from the government saying there's no money. In fact, President William Ruto said that we need to live within our means and if it's possible, uh, maybe we can listen to to bite number four um, as we continue about how we need to live within our means and the government does not have money to pay doctors and then we can continue. We must live within our means and we are going to have a bigger conversation as Kenyans so that when the Bible says that a responsible father leaves an inheritance for their children we as Kenyans, we should not leave debt to our children. I know just before the government, spoke, the president spoke, Yvonne, I remember the doctors had said that they had spoken to everybody except the president. And they were saying, oh, the president, I think this matter is in your hands now. You need to, to help sort it out. And when the president came back to the country, that's what he said. And then after that, now it's been, um, I think, um, blow after blow uh, uh, to, to the doctors and, and the medical uh, practitioners who are striking. Because one, the county government of Nyeri um, has suspended yeah. the doctors who are on strike. The Kenya uh, University teaching, uh, referral, uh, teaching a Referral Hospital has also suspended the doctors who have gone on strike and hired other doctors to take their place. Foreign doctors. Foreign doctors. Kisumu County also yeah. has taken the same step today. And remember, we, see, we keep saying, oh, um, you know, the health sector is a devolved function and all that. But of course, 85% of the money comes from the national government. But the step taken by Nyeri and Kisumu and then with, with, the, with the teaching and referral hospital is a huge one because it means we don't need you. You might as well keep striking. We're going to find alternatives to not having doctors working. But even from what the, the, the president has said about not having um, money to pay the doctors, really, um, may make people start asking questions about what exactly is the government spending its money on. We've had reports, we've had even the Auditor General talking about how there's, they're spending money that maybe is not accounted for, they're spending too much on this and that. There are supplementary budgets that are being uh, talked about here, about money is being increased for particular offices or not. We've had a report coming out about how much money is being spent in the counties from buying chairs to doing this and that. Smart watches. Smart watches and for branding. And, and, and it makes people ask themselves, so what exactly, um, who is important in this country if it's not the medical practitioners? Yeah. Even as I finish, um, two days ago, we had to take my mother to a hospital at night. And then I kept thinking, we did find someone there to be able to attend to her. Mm. And I kept thinking about what if we had not gotten someone to attend to her at night, yeah. even if you had the money to pay for the service, and there's no one there to attend to, this, to your sick relative, what would you do? 
exactly what would you do because yeah. you may say ah e mum go mo hauni sumbui me because i can go to a private yeah. hospital and be able to pay for the service but what if you you are in a desperate situation where the nearest hospital is one that may not have who you need na uko na pesa ya kulipa na kuna mtu akusaidia i think we really really need to start taking uh, the doctors more seriously i think than we are because they're important these people work crazy hours these people you know you can be called in the middle of the night you've gone and mm. told kuna story unasema ah nitakuja asubuhi but if you call a doctor in the middle of the night tell them there's an emergency in the hospital atavaa viatu atavaa nguo na atotoka ataenda so i think we need to start taking these guys a bit more seriously than yeah. we are right now uh, to be fair though if i were called in the middle of the night because it's a story it's a <laughs> breaking <laughs> news story <laughs> and i would come to work just <laughs> and i'm saying that for your boss all around the table <laughs> I, I no, I'm, I, no, I'm kidding. But I, I do understand oh, yeah, uh, yeah. what you're saying. Yes, Linus. Well, first of all, so you've probably, because you're not unionizable, you'll have to... <laughs> <laughs> noted. Uh, uh, Duly and, noted. And, and, and on a serious note, yeah. I mean, uh, one point that has been made very clearly yeah. is the place of uh, trade unions in, um, in the shared space of uh, national affairs. I think there's a lot of agony that is coming with uh, and pain and agony that is coming with the doctor strike but you can't take away that fact that one thing that they have been able to demonstrate is a strong voice mm. clarity in terms of what they are looking for and strength of purpose and you see these are the things the new constitution went to try and make possible yeah because it would have been very very difficult in a different setup where you lord over uh, institutions lord over mm-hmm. uh, people uh, dictate how much they'll earn and and um, I, i think there is a little positive story that uh, <coughs> uh, the doctor's uh, story is also telling mm-hmm. the power of the voice they're asking very consistently and how are we here we should not also not be unfair based on uh, <coughs> facts that exist the country is here because there was a cba mm-hmm. agreement that was signed in 2017 which the government now has tried to walk away from and um, I, i always find it uh, um, a, a bit laughable the way we try and separate one regime from another yeah uh, what in fact We government. really ne- never had any regime change in this country. I mean, it, it, it's the same. Uh, uh, what, th- there was a close one in, in 2002 when National Rainbow Coalition uh, replaced Kanu, but Kanu quickly came back through a party called PNU, and uh, it, it's been yeah. back, back since. Yeah. So for those trying to dra- uh, draw the line, and I saw some reports about uh, former CS mm. health <coughs> trying to say that... Uh, Uh, the agreement um, is impossible to implement. Mm. Uh, then it brings the question of how <clears throat> public officers, state officers, holding officers, uh, who swear mm. by the constitution to, <clears throat> uh, to do right, how do you enter a CBA agreement yeah. and you only meant it as a lie? Yeah. Uh, didn't mean it uh, yeah you, you, you don't mean it uh, you know there's a lot of quoting of the bible in our public affairs these days and, and i think there's a part of the bible that also talks about when a child asks the parent for uh, a fish you don't give him a snake mm. if they ask for bread you don't give them stones uh, so read the cba and uh, it's sounding like and and you just go by what the state officers are saying right from the president downwards that we are not in a financial position to honor those uh, details so what next again i think the the show last week spoke about uh, uh, the place of dialogue yeah. the place of negotiations because that's what trade unions are there for you must enter into an agreement with them and and seed some ground Um, it's starting to sound a bit like how it normally sounds with uh, even previous governments, whether they're handling teachers or doctors, where now you reach a point and say, do this failure to which. Mm, yeah. And we had that today, I think, from the head of the public service, saying that you have 24 hours mm-hmm. to get back to work or face uh, uh, consequences. And um, 
history of the trade unions tell, tell us that, you know, it, it's hard to impose even those consequences you are talking about mm -hmm. because these are rights enshrined in the Constitution, mm -hmm. actually, and, and these people, they, they, they have options in terms of uh, defending their right to do what they are doing and to ask for what they thought they negotiated for successfully in the 2017 CBA. Yeah, you know, the issues that you're raising then um, speak to the sincerity of talks and the negotiation process. Um, because where we are now um, is as a result of, you know, that 100-day strike in 2017. In fact, at the time, the grievances were of a CBA from 2013 that was not fully honoured. And then they went back to the negotiating table after, you know, uh, the protracted strike and then came up with this CBA. And just... Um, one of the things that I think I find interesting is when, uh, you know, the former CS then says um, that, uh, you know, the strike uh, or rather the, the clauses would be difficult to implement. The SRC chair was also here on Tuesday and said uh, those agreements were done under duress. We're not sure what the... Uh, the circumstances of the duress were, whether there was a gun to their heads or, you know, there was sort of threats under the table. Governor Mudom Injuki says some of the clauses that are not uh, in that CBA are not only difficult to implement, but unreasonable. He says 95% of the doctors have individual count, uh, contracts with the counties, which is true. Now, that CBA that was signed for 2017 to 2021 was then again signed by individual counties. And that happened, I believe, in September um, of 2017. Um, and at that time, the county governments and the union then signed those CBAs and those CBAs were registered at the different labor courts in the country. So these were documents that were arrived at, at after a protracted negotiation yes, yes. with a seven-member team that had people from Ministry of Health and union representatives. Now, um, not only that, then uh, he then says that uh, it doesn't make sense um, uh, for one thing, that the doctors should strike en masse, that they should attempt to deal with the counties. They have. We know this from 2023, not one county, but several. In September, for instance, uh, doctors in Yamira had downed their tools after they said negotiations with their respective county governments had failed. Not only that, in January, uh, was it this year or um, last year, the union officials did meet with the Council of Governors to try and avert a strike. Those talks were there. So, you know, this is what I mean about the sincerity of yeah. the talks. If then, after a protracted uh, process, a legal, a legally binding document is then signed only for people to come and say, oh, but hang on, this was unreasonable. Was this not known at the time of signing it? And when statements like these are then made, does it not put in doubt the sincerity of the talks that are happening right now. Why would doctors then trust anything that is said at the negotiating table at this moment? Because as we've seen, there is admittance that, you know, all of these things are done in bad faith and with cards under the table and maybe to just end the strike so that you can uh, move it forward. I also just want to debunk something uh, interesting that Governor Mudom Njuki said. He said it doesn't make sense that the CBA recognized interns who are not employees. Now, it goes in detail, the CBA, about uh, interns, that they will get a salary equivalent to civil servants. Good it bill. goes ahead yeah. to even talk about their remuneration, the, the house allowance, uh, leave allowance, committee, and put it within the job group of the civil service. So all of this was clearly laid out, including getting comprehensive cover, uh, health insurance cover that is meant for civil servants, dictating what they do, their hours of work, maternity leave as per the law, including as well ensuring their employment post-internship once that is done uh, successfully. Now, these are all of the issues that were agreed to. And I think it's important for us to note that the doctors are not asking for anything new. They're asking for a CBA for 2021 so to be fully implemented. And here's the other thing. Governments function in perpetuity. So once you take on this new administration, it cannot be that you disown things that were done before. Because if you're going to disown a CBA with the doctors, you may as well disown 
everything that the previous administration had ever gotten into. And the subsequent administration would then disown everything once they take over. How does a country process or progress if we're going to keep going back and forth? So, you know, these are some of the things. And I wonder when all of these statements are made, what the tone is in that, in that room. meeting room. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think the challenge and the problem began at the very start um, when the doctors declared a strike because the government had an opportunity uh, to make good of a bad situation. And that was last year. Exactly. When they started, yeah. They had an opportunity for all the conversations that we're hearing the rational thinking that now government has just realized the wage bill is too high. We cannot afford any further increment for be they doctors or be they doctor interns. There was a window. That window was abused by the same government's officials. When they started saying that they will be sucked, when they started saying that they're just interns, they're students, mm. they're there to learn. You see, even if on basic interpretation or definition, that might be correct or that, that might be true according to the government uh, officials, it comes out in a condescending uh, tone, which is, which is really wrong for negotiations because these are workers that you're dealing with. They are workers that are supposed to be uh, providing services and these services are going to human beings in this country whom are the uh, people that the government really uh, governs. So that opportunity was lost. Now, there's an attempt to catch up. Sometimes it feels like it's too late because if it's close to 30 days, again, there's no uh, any um, evidence to show that we'll not see another 30 days of the strike because the grandstanding continues, ultimatums continue to be issued, uh, threats to withdraw the salaries, threats not to um, actually uh, to, to, to invoke disciplinary measures. They continue, but at the same time, if that CBA was signed by the Cabinet Secretary for Health that time, Cleo Pamailu, mm. the peers of Health that time, Julius Correll, uh, Dr. Omo Oluga uh, from uh, the, the side of uh, KMPD as the Secretary Oroko General that, well. that time, and Samuel Oroko, who was the chairperson of KMPDU. I mean, the, those signatures must be worth something. So for us to be here talking about um, a decision that now governors again all it cannot be implemented. And it's true. I mean, Muthama Njoki is saying that uh, doctor interns are being rec recognized as employees. In fact, the CBA talks about yeah. shall be issued with employment, employment letters. letters yes. So even if that is an anomaly that they now realize. So why were signatures um, imposed on these documents? Early this week, I spoke to one of the leaders in parliament and they were saying, Again, citing that narrative that this was under duress. But you see, again, even if it was under duress, there was a government in place. That government, the deputy president was William Ruto, now president. He must have known of such kind of a conversation so that if it was going to be untenable, something should have been done. But then again, the signing was 30th of June 2017. Mm -hmm. It was just um, over one month to the election. Yeah. Uh, uh, Agostinane, you may recall. <laughs> so I, I, I don't know, because... At the same time, when they continue to say here that it is Kenyans, it is patients that are approaching those facilities, they cannot get any service. So what is supposed to be happening? And I think, uh, yeah. Yvonne, before you continue, the, the tone, we keep talking about the tone mm. of these meetings. And um, even from government officials speaking in different platforms, of course, we are the head of the public service today. I was listening to the, the chair of SRC speaking to you, uh, Gituku, and you have not mistaken, she said, what the interns will be paid is not remuneration, it's almost like a stipend. Like a point, yeah. mm. right. And makes me wonder about, hold on, are these, uh, when we talk about medical interns, these are people who've finished medical school. Mm. These are people who took the oath. These are people who actually work, who attend to patients, to sick patients, and give the medication, and, and, and do all that, all that a doctor is supposed to do, because Wame Soma, it's not like any other intern who is trying to, to get some sort of experience, Kupata registration, Fulani. The internship is a requirement. It's a requirement. For employment. Exactly. For Which means you actually trust them enough yeah. to tell them, okay, and then in Fanya Kazi, right. we're giving you human life. Tunapatia wa gonjwa, and then imashugulike. They have a provincial license and they work. Mm. So when they say we're giving them a stipend, unawadunisha. Unadunisha, 
the six years of study that they've gone through. Unadunisha everything that they've done. Because for you to be able to get to that point, you must have pitted. Miaka yoyote. Yeah? All those things that you've done to get to that point. So you almost unapuza what they've done. And I keep remembering how when we were children we used to say, ukikuwa mkuma untakuwa daktari. When we see this, what will our children think? They're like, ah, oh, teseka sana, wacha tuachane now. These people are important. And I keep saying we need to give them the importance they deserve. You know, um, if they now want to say interns are not employees... How do you go about undoing a CBA, which is a legally binding document, which is registered in court? In a court. Yeah. If it says that, um, you know, all medical officers shall be posted to internship centers not later than 30 days after clearance by their respective boards. Remember, they've been given clearance by the board. Um, if you're talking about them getting a salary equivalent, that is what the CBA says. Doesn't talk about a stipend. Right. Not only that, it goes on to say that they will remit taxes on that salary and health insurance. They basically are getting all of these dues. So fine. The Ministry of Health has decided or some officials they have decided that interns will not be paid a salary. They should be paid a stipend. But this was part of a legal document. Do you undo that by public statements in the press? Or is there a proper way to now undo all of these things and get back to the drawing table? So, on the other hand, the document that is under discussion is a legal one. The people who signed this document didn't sign it in their personal capacity. Cleopa Mailu didn't. He signed it as the Cabinet Secretary for Health, who is a government official. So, for all intents and purposes, it was signed by a CS. On the other hand, with the union officials, it wasn't signed by Dr. Oluga in his personal capacity. It was signed by the Secretary General of the Medical Practitioners Union. And so, for me, those are the things to now consider. All right. So we don't agree with this anymore. How you undo that has to be as tidy a process as it was putting it back together. And again, Tone, all of these things are being said out here how do you expect good faith and everything that happens mm. on the table in a room um, like that? And then what happens now is you sack them. And I don't know, but there's reports that even those foreign doctors, first of all, need permits. Yes, to work. To able to work. And those permits were expedited. Yeah. So the government can be efficient when it wants to be. And what are we paying? And how doctors? much are we paying them? Yeah. Are we paying them the same rate as we pay uh, local doctors? So we don't have the money to pay local doctors, but we have the money to pay foreign doctors higher than the local doctors. I, I right. It, look, government will always first pretend to be able to solve it before it finally accepts what needs to happen, which is negotiation. Mm. On this issue, first of all, there has to be an admission that doctors are coming on a higher moral pedestal than the government because it's simply about a document that you signed, you committed yourself to, and now you're saying you cannot uh, afford. So it shouldn't even be possible to start with something like, we apologize, we are sorry that that was the agreement that... Uh, we had in 2017, but can we renegotiate because our situation doesn't allow us, uh, we don't have the capacity to honor it uh, to the fullest. So, and, 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 and you know, government has not won a single battle in fights with doctors. Uh, I was just checking way back in 1979, August, a year into President Moyes, uh, time as second president, uh, there was a major strike of the very few doctors that the country had at the time. And the minister at the time was Ada Magugu, Ada Kinyanjui Magugu, mm -hmm. who went on exactly like all ministers proceed with this, which is threaten the doctors, tell them you have 24 hours, you have 48 hours, you have a day, you have a very short time to report to duty or face uh, co consequences. Those threats don't work. What works is negotiations. And I think what we're also facing is the real test of governance. These are things governments exist for. 
it's hard work. And I think a fair point has to be made that um, the head of public service has been hard at work. Uh, in those negotiations, together with, uh, I think, I think an, an entire team of the ministry officials. Uh, we've seen uh, Susan Nakumicha, the CS Health. We've also seen the PS uh, Modoni in those, in those talks, all burning midnight oil. Now, this is the reason of being called a uh, government. You have to handle real issues like uh, this one. Try and find a way, a way out. And uh, there's absolutely no option in this one, especially because they are dealing with doctors who feel and who, I think, come from a raised moral pedestal of we are not the, 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 the party at fault here. Mm -hmm. You have our document for all yeah. these years. Yeah. Can you implement? And I remember the, the Kenya National Union of Teachers at some point uh, under uh, the late Ambrose Adongo. Adongo was also in that higher moral pedestal where it had managed to get the government to sign a, a document. So when you sign a CBA, you had better know how to implement it. And I remember with Adongo's uh, CBA, what they had to renegotiate was to spread it over a long period yeah, of time. Yeah. And I'm not sure, I, I'll actually check whether it has ever fully been implemented. 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 Yeah, yeah. And, and you know what you're speaking about with the, with the doctors, let's listen to them now. Uh, Dav Giatella, who's uh, the Secretary General, um, reinforcing the need for the CBA to be protected. The CBA that was signed in 2017, to which has paid doctor interns for the last seven years, must be protected. Must be protected. Must be. The basic salary arrears that are owed to all the doctors across the country yes. must be paid. Must be paid. We have been willing to meet in good faith without any conditionalities. Every single meeting we have been called to, we have attended no matter how late the invite comes or no matter how late the meeting extends. Uh, and so, again, to just uh, reiterate, this is uh, where we are and, and where we've been. Um, you know, one would understand the doctor's hesitance to get to the negotiating table. And even the validity of anything the government signs uh, going forward, if years later you can come back and say, oh, well, you know, well, well, we were under duress. We, um, I mean, I think for government officials to say they were under duress... Uh, Yvonne, yes. let's, let's debunk that for a yes. minute because I'm looking at the initial pages of yeah. the collective bargaining agreement mm -hmm. and I'll read, it, I'll read it verbatim. This collective bargaining agreement herein after referred to as the agreement reached between the KMPDU, herein referred to as the union on the first part and the government of Kenya through the Minister of Health, herein after referred to as the employer on the other part. And they say the parties meeting together in free and voluntary association have determined to regulate the relations between them in the interest of promotion of sound industrial relations, the economic well-being of the workers and the employer, and overall improvement of healthcare service delivery in the public health sector. They say, in order to achieve these objectives, they have agreed to enter into the following CBA negotiated between them. This agreement is made in the interest of the health of the Kenyan people. <clears throat> that is the document that you're talking about. So and at the end, the very last page, it is signed by those officials you're yeah. talking about. The Actually, every secretary. page is signed. I was exactly. Yes. The principal secretary, yeah. uh, the officials of KMPDU, the secretary general and the chairperson. And therefore, remember that there has been conversations in this country. And people usually go to court, especially when they feel that a bill has been tabled before parliament. Public participation has been held. Their voices have not been heard. The law has been assented to, to become an act of parliament. So the aggrieved parties go to court to mm -hmm. challenge that which parliament passed and the president signed. Right. Public participation. This is a document that was signed by the government of Kenya and the officials of the KMPDU after negotiations. Mm. So was there government participation? Because on the side of laws, you have public participation. In this case, the signatures would mean there was actually government participation. Right. The strike had been on for nearly 100, 100 or so, was it 105 or thereabout. Yeah. And therefore, this is what uh, brought that strike to an end. So if government really participated in this, and this was under duress, I think there has to be responsibility. People yeah. have to be accountable because if you move the government to take an action under duress, 
you should be held accountable. Right. If you are signing what in Parliament would be a money bill because it's what causes the government to spend money, if indeed officials who had taken the oath of office to protect the constitution of the Republic of Kenya and the laws thereby established, and you cause the government of Kenya, the Kenyan taxpayers, to incur okay. expenditure yeah. outside what is allowed under duress, you should take responsibility. Right. Is the government willing to see that those people that signed should actually take responsibility? I will, I will wait for the day that ha that happens, because if that doesn't happen, then it, this is just noise. These are just excuses that it was under duress. And like you said... It's a lie, actually. It is, yeah. It's and like you said, if public participation doesn't happen, the aggrieved people go to court. Yeah. So if government participation didn't happen, government <laughs> should go to court <laughs> and undo this whole document rather than, you know, have uh, media interviews disparaging. I mean, the thing is, government has legal recourse with all of these things that they're now trying to dispute from this agreement. If they want to repudiate everything that was done and said here and signed, then they know the avenue. Um, but but Yvonne, report. Yvonne, you talk about the legality of the CBA because it was registered in court in 2017. Yeah. And I, I keep thinking about, can the courts do more? I say this because um, the, the, the government and the doctors were given 14 days by the employer and labor courts to complete negotiations and report back to court by 17th of the month. That was after they had gone to court the first time and they were told to have a whole government approach in this. So we had different ministers and, 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 and MCSs and the head of the public service uh, meeting the doctors. And I remember that first meeting was most of it was spent with the doctors telling them what the issues are. So that first deadline that we were given of 14 days ended without an agreement. And then the second one now, they were told by 17, you need to come back and report the progress. And then the doctors, the court also ordered the union to suspend the strike. But I remember the doctor said they're not in contempt of any court orders. The government, too, has not followed orders on the issues. So there's that whole thing. And in my head, I keep thinking, so what more can the courts do? Because when they go back on 17th, mm. are they going to be able to compel the government to pay the doctors? Are they going to compel the doctors to go back to work? So, so, so we're at an impasse, really, in terms of what next? Yeah, in mm. terms of, do the doctors go back? Does the government give in? Who gives in first? Who blinks first? So they can have some semblance of normalcy come back into the health sector. Yeah, all this while, by the way, um, you know, deductions for SHIF will begin in July. And there's supposed to be registration. I mean, I just think there's, there's a whole bigger issue uh, within the health sector. And this is important but symptomatic by the time they deal with this issue and then start to deal with another issue of mistrust around NHIF and, and the transition to, um, you know, the new health fund and registering uh, Kenyans around it. You know, when you take a look at all of this, you think, OK, so by the time they're done with this, then there's, you know, uh, something else that they have to work on. And all of these are, are equally important. And um, um, Sam. R right. And you see, it gets worse every day because... Yeah. For sure. Actually, it's not just the doctors who on strike. The other unions are also on strike for different reasons. But at the end of the day, someone has to sit down and ask them the question, what is the impact of this? Mm -hmm. uh, because you have Kenyans who don't know what to do. It's not like Kenyans got well after the strike started. People are suffering. The weather is not helping. People are facing different challenges. So people are being forced to go to the nearest uh, drug store to buy whatever they think might be of service to them. And some of those people that um, operate in those drug stores, they're not necessarily trained to prescribe. In any case, it is only a doctor who can prescribe. Mm. And then it is a pharmacist who is trained, who can tell what is the correct dosage for what ailment, what are the impacts, what are the dangers. That pharmacist is on strike. So this is, I mean, it's tolling of the health sector. And if this is not resolved, then we'll get the answers. There are people who are losing their lives. Maybe they are being underreported because yeah. ordinarily it is hospitals that keep track of how many people are dying. Yeah. This data is not available. Of course, you would not expect the government officials to be delivering that information of the impact of uh, this on lives of people. But it has to be remembered that there's a responsibility on the side of government of Kenya. And this includes the national government and the county governments to yeah. protect the lives, lives of Kenyans. So if this issue is not resolved, whatever solution has to be found has to be found quickly.
because you listen today through the Catholic bishops and they are saying that um, a lot of patients because of the strike are turning to the faith-based organizations or mm. the faith-based hospitals. But they're also complaining that they are owed some 2 billion shillings in um, remittances from the... Uh, not, not remittances, but a claim settlement Expressions, from yeah. the National Health Insurance mm. Fund. So this is the month of April. Starting the 1st of July, which is in less than three months, mm -hmm. it is expected that we should transition to the Social Health Insurance Fund and a new regime of deductions and a new regime of financing of hospitals. So if there are still debts or liabilities that NHF is yet to settle, and these hospitals, the faith-based organizations are supposed to be attending to now a bigger pool of patients, what are they supposed to do? Because they have challenges. They don't depend on KEMSA, which, is, um, which serves the public hospitals. How are they supposed to procure drugs? If there's no money, how are they supposed to uh, pay their employees who now have more work to do and they're more strained? Mm -hmm. So it has to be thought about in that space where you're looking at the impact and what is the greater good? And one can only hope because there will be um, a national wage bill conference next week. One can only hope that, apart from talking about the cost of running government, because the president came out clearly and said that the wage bill is 47% of our revenues, which is really high because there should be a maximum of 35%. Mm. As they talk about that, they must also talk about, so what is happening to the patients or the Kenyans that are not able to access these services yet they have paid the taxes to be in a position uh, to run those facilities. And, and things may, it will get worse, Yvonne, because in seven days, uh, the, 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 the specialist doctors and consultants are now planning uh, to join the strike, agitating, of course, for the implementation of the CB. And they said in seven days, if there's no progress, they're asking their members to withdraw services from private health facilities, uh, Yvonne. And as we finish, finally, I just want to read a tweet by Chibanzi Mochonda. Remember, he was a former Secretary General of KMPDU, and he says, from experience, one needs a very high degree of emotional intelligence, mental fortitude, and resilience to negotiate with the government. The CB of 2017 to 2021 was negotiated for three months between March and June 2017. There was no duress whatsoever on either party. The nego negotiations had us endure long hours of back and forth arguments amidst a lot of intimidation. And he says that, and he says the government should simply honor the CBA. Yeah, it's likely that we will see the effects of this um, on patients as, as time goes. Patients who are in need of critical care, maybe cancer patients and others, particularly the specialist doctors, join in. Because after weeks of not getting you know, medical attention from clinical officers, from doctors uh, and from lab techs and self-medicating at home, there is a likelihood that we will now start to see some more serious consequences um, from patients on this because, you know, there's a bit of a lag time with that, with just trying to cope until, uh, you know, it's no longer possible. Venus. Yeah, just, just one of the other consequences that Yvonne maybe I could add there mm -hmm. is that of um, fl uh, doctors fleeing the country. This becoming a very unattractive destination to... Uh, practice. And uh, if you actually look out there in the diaspora, we have a lot of um, Kenyans with a medical background that are thriving. They are doing their, uh, they are practicing their, their, their uh, professions out there as doctors. There was a time I was in Birmingham in the UK and uh, uh, a number of radiologists there, more than five actually, that uh, I got to meet were all from the Kenyatta National Hospital at the time. And uh, what does that do to us? It takes away uh, some of our best to go and work out there. I know we are now into this business of creating uh, jobs okay. outside there, but it should not be at the cost mm. of our national well-being. Um, and really should be a priority that our national health sector functions and functions properly. Indeed, let's take a break now. Um, when we come back on the program, it's time for, there you are, it's time for our final words. Uh, you don't want to miss that. Taking a very short break, we're back on NewsGang in just a minute. Please do stay with us.